All right, so hopefully you've had a chance to uh, explore some place in uh, a part of the world where you know there's some interesting change. I've just moved my pixel around a few times within this same uh, fire event. Um, and what I'm looking for, again, is whether the gray line uh, captures the stuff that I think I'm interested in. Um, now, in this case, it, it does a fairly good job of capturing that, and therefore the um, uh, the algorithm in this case does a decent job of, of capturing the change. Um, but if we look down at the NDVI signal in the lower right, um, one could make the argument that maybe we want to capture more of the depth of the of the disturbance and that it's getting fooled a little bit by the quick recovery, for example. Um, so what we want to do is um, go back to our land render options. And the second broad category are these segmentation parameters. And I won't go through all these in, in excruciating detail. We do talk about them in uh, the book and there are other resources you can find, including our own uh, help document that we talked about. Um, and, uh, but I will sort of highlight some of the ones that are sort of critical. And these, these segmentation parameters are the tuning knobs, let's say, that actually affect the behavior of the algorithm under the hood within Earth Engine. Um, and so the, the, the ones to sort of pay attention to are the maximum number of segments. And so the way the algorithm works is it, it, it tries to take a time series and break it into that maximum number of segments, whatever you tell it. Uh, and then it successfully, successively uh, simplifies one segment away at a time based on different rules. Uh, back to the point where there's just one segment, just two vertices, an endpoint and a bending endpoint. And it compares all those different recipes from one segment all the way up to your maximum. Um, and it attempts to make a good choice about which one best characterizes the change. So the maximum segments is just that, it's the maximum. It doesn't mean that it will always be the maximum. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna actually set this a little bit higher because we have, in this case, 1986 and 2022, uh, what is that? Close to 40 years of, of data. Basically, as a rule of thumb, uh, I, I try and keep the maximum segments no greater than about a third of the, um, the number of years that we have to work with. And that's just, it's not based on any sort of strict statistical approach. It's just kind of a rule of thumb that shows up in a lot of different cases with uh, for example, working with semivariograms, et cetera, you, you, it's, a, it's a balance between the degrees of freedom of the thing you're looking at, in this case, the number of years, uh, and the number of parameters you're trying to use to fit to it. And so we think of each segment as kind of a, a fitting parameter, almost, I guess, analogous to a beta in a regression. And you don't want too many because then you'll just overfit things. Um, I'm going to just increase this to nine. I, I find that too many uh, sometimes ends up finding way too much, uh, like little bits of noise, but that's again, a thing you can play with. We'll skip a couple of these. Um, the recovery threshold is a really important one. And this is really the one that I think has the most leverage in most ecosystems that I've played around with. And this is a number that is described in more detail uh, in both the, the original publication and in uh, our, our chapter, but essentially it goes from zero to one although you would never use zero, but um, practically it goes from 0.25-ish to one. And what this means is as it's fitting, as the algorithm is fitting, it will not allow recovery to happen faster than a certain rate defined by this thing. The way the rate is defined is just, it's, a little, uh, it's, it's easier to do mathematically, but difficult to describe. It's one over this number. So one over 0.25 is four. Um, and that's, the, the, the fastest number of years that a recovery is allowed to happen. So the algorithm needs to know a few things to be able to make that decision. First of all, what is recovery? So this is a, a, a definition based on the spectral index about which way is up, so to speak. And so we look at NDVI or NBR. These are vegetation indices where recovery would be a segment that is going upwards. Um, some indices, this isn't super clear about which direction is up, but most of them it is. And we define that in our own library about what those are. So this just says, in this case, if I had a recovery that was happening really fast, 
it would disallow it. It actually wouldn't even try to fit that point um, and it wouldn't allow that to come through any of the subsequent steps. That's a little, that's a, a little fast, uh, I'm sorry, a little slow. Um, so I'm gonna change this to point 0.5, which means that it will uh, disallow very fast recoveries that are, um, uh, where it covers the entire dynamic range in this case in two years. This is a number to play with, the maximum is one, and that basically turns off this filter at all. So if you're in a place where there's very fast uh, vegetation recovery, then uh, a recovery threshold of one might be appropriate. But that also means that you're probably going to accept more um, noise kind of in your system. Um, and I'm going to leave the rest of these the same. Um, the uh, minimum observations needed is actually something that it should be no greater than the maximum segments, but you really don't need to, uh, to mess with that typically. Um, and that's about it. So we'll just, I've only changed one thing here, which is the recovery threshold. So probably when I resubmit my pixel, um, these things won't change all that much. Um, the only thing that did change, I'll draw your attention to is the NDVI fit of the red line now captured all the way down to the bottom and then uh, the quick recovery and then multiple years. And that again is because in the prior iteration, I had a, 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 a sort of a, a damper on the on the recovery speed of the um, of the trajectory. So what I'm interested in is now you uh, taking the places or the place that you've looked at, go go back up to the line trender options um, and play around with some of these these parameters. I would again start with the maximum number of segments and the recovery threshold, um, and you can make decisions about those. Uh, they're described in more detail in uh, in the chapter, and we'll take a pause here on the video and let people uh, play around with that and probably take some questions. Thanks. <laughs>